pain, agony, and several hours spent late at night trying to figure out if a strategy works? That's right, it's Hearts of Iron 4 Road to 56, and today I'm excited to play a certain path. New game, and today I will play as Canada, and I have quite an interesting uh, idea to play. Right now as Canada, we are not doing uh, too well. We have Quebec call nationalists, which means we don't have any manpower. We have decided in recent years that it is a good idea to cut our military spending. We have what are essentially labor camps where people work for 20 cents a day, which is probably not good for the economy. And our air force sucks. I would love to just go for what I want to do today, but Canada is so weak compared to the US that I actually just need to go and focus on continuing our recovery from the Great Depression, because otherwise we stand no chance. Right, and the Canadian army is not, um, is not too grand, I would say. 87,000 soldiers, of which of those, only a third have guns. Like, what I like to imagine ha is happening is that we have like three guys in a post of soldier and we have one gun. And when the shift of one soldier ends, he just hands the gun to the other soldier. And we just switch it like that. Also, the mighty Canadian Air Force stands at nearly 30 planes. Truly a grand air force. And I don't think we even need to mention our navy due to just how glorious it is with its whole four destroyers. The HMS Vancouver. Hell yes. Oh look at this design. It is a submarine destroyer. How, how wonderful. Oh my god I just realized. I, I love this mode. Not only as I mentioned in another episode did they add the Volgadon Canal so you can go into the Caspian Sea with your navy but you can also go the St. Lawrence River and get into the Great Lakes over here. And if you're gonna ask, yes, you can indeed launch naval invasions from like Cleveland to like Toronto. Ah, oh, that's just wonderful. Fine, we'll close what are basically slave camps. I was able to get a silent workhorse for more political power and I will also get Doris Nilsson, the devoted communist for more Puka power and communist support. Don't worry Mr. Mackenzie King, no nothing bad will happen. Man, the Canadian focus tree is really packed with a lot of factories. Here you can get some military and civilian factories and also some steel mills and aluminum mills, like this is really nice. Now we can also get revolutionary mines, another 10% research speed, yes please. Carlist uprising the Spanish Civil War. Franco. What the hell did you do to cause this? Mao? Mao, what, what are you doing? I'll, I'll be real with you, I don't think this, this is the time to really, you know, start a civil war when you're getting invaded by the Japanese. I think you might be screwing over Cheng over here. Or though, you do not care, you handsome bastard, do you? Now we are going to do away with most of the effects of the Great Depression and then move on to the next phase. We are a sovereign nation and only we can decide which path we will walk in this world. Thus, we will forge our own future. We shall form the popular front in which all the people shall stand equal in a noble existence. We must move to secure a new Canada. A new empire of, of the workers. Now that we have formed the popular front, we can get William Cashton, the communist revolutionary. Canada shall belong to the workers. We will also need to invest more in our army, because minus 20% division recovery in 8 is not a busting at all. Yeah, we need to modernize our army pronto. Or should I say, modernize our army Toronto? We will also begin the preparations for a civil war and expand military support. We'll also start the research on the medium tank. <laughs> oh, this will go just wonderfully. I'm also gonna go and research the improved radio, because I want my tanks to be really good. The remnants of a once great imperial power drew us forcefully into the last war. We shall rectify this with a robust policy to never declare war. Now, we will ignite political violence to destabilize the current regime. Ignite the civil war. Now Tim Book, the staunch Stalinist is in charge. And our first move will be to abandon the anti-war policy, which we literally took like 4 months ago, but whatever. And get the supporting war policy. That's quite a drastic change I would say. And send them to occupy these uh, parts of like Quebec, Blech. I guess we'll have to take them back. 
Now that you have abandoned the anti-war policy, we can reinvoke the War Measure Act. There they go. Now I can finally get what I have been waiting for. Forced conscription. Yeah, sure, less worse for the instability, but at this point, I just have to conscript the Quebecois. We could perhaps come to some agreement, which would get us most of the way there, or we could force the Frenchies into the army. Yes. Our next move will be to form the Young Communist League of Canada, and after that, the Canadian Youth Congress, and repeal the Padlock Law, which oppressed the workers' right to freedom of speech against their capitalist overlords. Now we can also get Leo Robak, the woman's figurehead, another 15% recruit population factor. We are just stacking it at this point. Now you will need to design our tank. This is the design I uh, have made. I decided not to in increase the armor any further since that would require even more steel which I do not have. As the fires of revolution all around the globe have been ignited, we must join hands in hands with our brothers and sisters in the revolution. And we join the Soviet Union now. Right, we mobilized as much as we could. Now we have to go to service bar requirement. Believe me, it will not be too long until we go to scraping the barrel. Our army is ready. It is time to strike the United Kingdom. And we shall crush them under the weight of the combined proletariat. We will also change our doctrine to mobile warfare. Not even a day later, we are going to declare war on the United Kingdom. And we are going to take Newfoundland as quickly as possible, just to prevent this being used by the Americans in the future. Labrador is ours. Well, uh, the Americans just joined the Allies. My defenses are set up everywhere. I believe this will work out. The war hasn't even started yet and I've already deployed 11% of my whole population. Winter still hasn't settled in Maine, so I will pin down the troops in Maine with my troops and then use my tanks to destroy them. Yeah, never mind, the winter literally just set in, so uh, no offensives. How is Europe doing? Well, the Germans are fighting the Soviets. It seems like the British are actually holding very well in Africa. And my defenses are strong. Right now Toronto is under a bit too much pressure. Just remember, if this single city falls, I lose 20 factories. It happened before and let me tell you something, it is not nice whatsoever. It is also April now, so winter is pretty much gone. Now it is time to launch the offensive. Pin their divisions down in place. Whoa, 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 you're not moving. Now just to close it and take the port. There you go. Oh, that will sting for America. Ooh, how many was that? 450,000 casualties already to me. And they also have to fight the Germans. So, uh, I don't think they're going to do it well. I was going to say this time the Americans are not escaping. But I, I captured the railway gun? Okay, I'm gonna take that. You know what, screw it, let's go for the offensive right now. Boston is ours and thus is Massachusetts, Massachusetts, Massab. This state is also ours now. It's still July, we need to press our advantage before the winter comes again. Just pin everyone, pin everyone in place. I don't want to see them move a single tile. I'm just mass clicking at this point. There you go, that's some major advancements. We cannot be passive, we need to press our advantage because the more the Americans get to keep their states, the more manpower they have, the more industry they have, the more equipment they get to pump out. Once winter comes we can chill, but right now we just have to push forward. 700,000 casualties for the Americans already, that is ridiculous. What I'm thinking is that winter will soon arrive. So I will close the exit from Michigan to New York and then I'll go for Detroit, Cleveland to capture Ohio and also Chicago for Illinois, which will cut off a lot of factories from the Americans. But I will have to move quite quickly before they arrive. There you go, this is our moment, we'll go for Detroit. Ah, they, they just put too many troops in Detroit, I couldn't stop them. Fine, I'll retreat and go for it next time. This is when it gets good. When the Americans lose so many troops that they are no longer able to fill their entire front line, I can just encircle them with infantry alone. Who said you couldn't make encirclements with infantry? Yeah, let's try and push for Detroit again. No, America, you're not escaping this. Stay where the hell you are right now. Ah, we captured Detroit, we did it. This is our summer and, I guess, autumn offensive. Oh my god, I'm getting so many factories that I'm capturing from America. Thank you, USA. Made in Canada with American factories. Well, factories are no longer a concern, at least. That's very nice. What I'm learning is that if you're playing communist, then you get and you get liberated workers, 
It's best just to strap capture land. If I get Cleveland, that's uh, Ohio captured. Oh, can I get Chicago? Okay, I'm I'm getting a bit greedy. I'll admit that. God, Field Marshal Leonard Castle. This guy is amazing. I can give him adaptable, logistical wizard, and winter expert. That is so stupid. It is, am it is amazing. Again, winter still hasn't arrived yet. We are still able to push. I want to clean up the rest of Michigan and then, yes, I definitely push for Chicago and, oh and Ohio. Get an extra research slot. I'm getting into the groove of this, I like it. Two tank divisions to Chicago and another two to Cleveland. Actually, forgetting Cleveland for some reason is just open, I don't care what it, what it is open and undefended. I'm just gonna push. Come on, give me Chicago. I took like a good uh, chunk of the American industry. Well, since the Americans can't really stop my offensive right now, since I'm stretching their front line so much, I'm just, I guess I'm just going to keep going. More microing, more microing. Close this encirclement here. Yeah, winter is starting, definitely set in, in Northern Kenta. And it's coming down. Now I actually need to stabilize this front line and get my port guards to actually, you know, protect the ports because there are a lot of American ports that I have to protect. I also probably need to shorten this front line a bit because it is a bit long. Man, that was a good offensive. I just captured 60 million Americans and I've also completed my doctrine. <laughs> This is like such a cursed map. You have the United States of America, West, and then like the Canadian popular state. There is like New England. Let me guess, there is already like a Kaiserreich path with this. Oh, I love this so much. I'm just going to annoy the Americans by launching some limited offensives everywhere. I mean, I said I was gonna go on the defensive, but like, come on. Look at all this space over here that is not occupied by American troops. Come on, my beautiful tanks. Do what you were made to do. Also pin down these divisions and close these, in these encirclements. Faster, faster, move faster. You have to encircle more American troops. Actually, screw it. I'm just gonna send one tank division to encircle these divisions like in the north. Yeah, I think I'll need to mobilize like a few more divisions because I don't have enough to occupy everything. This is going so stupidly well. Why is this going so like so well? More, more encirclements, more dead Americans. Damn, these things are s moving so fast. You know what's great? Full offensive on all directions, on all fronts. You know what's great? All those service we need, we actually really need it. Now I can deploy another 24 whole units. The fall of Kiev? What, what is happening in Europe exactly? Oh, the Germans are not doing well at all. I wonder how many casualties are on the Eastern Front. <laughs> oh my god. 4.4 million casualties to the Germans and only 2.3 to the Soviets. Oh, you want to capitulate the Soviets? No problem, just push to Vladivostok. Japan? Why do you want me to join the co-prosperity sphere? Like, I understand we are... I'm at war with America, but you good, bro? Not... Actually, screw it. I'm gonna join the Corpus Verde Sphere. <laughs> you know what? Screw it. We're joining the Japanese in this fight against the Imperialist World Order. Maybe I can encircle these divisions up north. I'm sorry, guys, but you're dying. I have to stop this offensive because I don't have the resources to finish it yet. So I will just have to draw like a fallback line behind the Missouri and just hold. All the way into northern Canada. America's at 2 million casualties. Come on, just fold over and die. Please. Finally, I'm getting these beautiful advanced medium tanks. This is what I know you are here for. Beautiful encirclements. Alright, let's finally cut Florida. Jesus, please. We're going down the Missouri to burn down the south once again. Just like the good old days. We have all our equipment and now we can go full offensive again. Come on guys, just leave just leave America die, please. The Americans already just have 2.5 million casualties, come on. Yet another encirclement. Well, it looks like the Soviets are currently getting their teeth knocked in. I might have to rush to, the, to their safe. Eh, but they still have like a half a country to lose until they capitulate. Whatever. Just rush to San Francisco and Los Angeles. Just go. There goes the United States finally. Mexico is dying. Mexico is falling. 
we are finally gonna take these guys out. The plan is I will just um, produce a bunch of equipment and send it to the Soviets to kick the Germans. Meanwhile, I'm just going to take out the UK and finally kill the Allies, damn it. It's not a good of a look for the Canadian communists to be part of the Cobra Spadisphere when the Japanese are also fighting the Soviets. Let's give the Soviets some land lease. I'll give them first 1200 convoys. Here, have like 15,000 support equipment. 3000 motorized, 3000 anti-air, just have like 300 locomotives. There you go Soviets, have a good one. The American industry is gonna go to feed the Soviet war machine against the Germans. Meanwhile, the, my Japanese ally is capturing Siberia. Let's declare war on the Germans. Oh my god, look at all this cancer. I'm killing so many convoys, it's so... I, I love this, I love this, Abs I absolutely love this. <laughs> the Soviets are actually holding, managing to hold off because I just sent them a ton of equipment. I have been a bit cancerous to, to the Germans and the British. We are landing in Reykjavik, boys. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not rushing to save the Soviets, like they are my communist friends even though I'm literally in, in a faction of their enemy. <laughs> and I'm... <laughs> But I am feeding them equipment, so can you really say I'm I'm the bad guy here? Well, uh, the Russians died. Don't worry, G don't worry, Germany. I will save you. I will save you. Holy God! Look at how much naval experience I'm getting. This is illegal. I'm literally getting like a hundred every two days. Just a second, and I will have a full doctrine over here. There you go. We've we've got everything in training interdiction. Holy. Yeah, the UK doesn't have convoys anymore, that's it. Let's convoy raid the Mediterranean, let's just kill Italy too in the process. Well, Patain literally just revolted against the Germans and brought in the Japanese against the Germans. Man in the high castle, everyone, they're, they're literally fighting over Central Asia. Hi everyone, so as you can see, um, I basically just pushed all the way north and overextend their front, the German front line and I took out Ostland, Romania, Hungary, Slovakia, Czechia and now I'm just trying to push through Germany and beat as cancerous as possible. Things are going just wonderfully, the game, the game is performing better than I expected. It's nearly going at 10 FPS per second. This is what the Axis currently looks like, the core prosperity sphere has pretty much changed everything. 99% come on Germany, you're, wait, 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 I can drop a nuke, I'm dropping a nuke on Stadtberg and this is it, the first nuke clear bombing the German Reich and its allies have cup Capitulated. And we have a majority of the war score here. Right, I took the German and the Italian navies, I'm just gonna go and roll them. Apparently they have like 2 million soldiers somewhere, I don't know, I don't ask me where they are, I don't see them. We are taking out Britain very quickly, but guess what, we still have to invade Brazil because they became a major. Alright, so I'm noticing a few things in Asia, first I'm noticing that Japan took Omsk, just Omsk, then I'm also noticing that we have this very weirdly shaped Kazakhstan and then I'm also noticing that uh, we have the Shivan Jidis Republic over here. Are you, are you serious game? Now let's land in Brazil. Now I just need to take these guys away. Brazil has 240 factories, what the hell man? How? How does Brazil have 240 factories? How, how is that possible? Ma Brazil is a freaking metropolis. We say we actually saved our brothers. They they managed to survive like two months with coastal bombardment. Now they will actually survive. We have won. We have defeated the Allies and the Axis. The Spanish fucking declared war on me. Now I'll just have to do a very, very, very grueling war to win this. I have contained the Japanese and their allies to the sea, and I have realized I only need to capitulate the French, the Spanish and the Japanese themselves to win this war actually. So I am planning currently a massive naval invasion of Spain with like 96 divisions. Alright, this is going to be a bit ridiculous. Just put one massive front line and you know what, let's just go. Meanwhile, you know what, I'm just gonna tell these guys to open up another front in the Netherlands to really just crush them. And as you can see, I'm keeping the convoy reading as cancerous as ever. Let me tell you, investing into submarines was the best decision I could have possibly made. In a world of darkness, fascism and juvenism, the Canadian People's Republic finds itself at war with effectively the entirety of the world. But we shall not back down, we shall push forward and we shall move to the total victory and liberation of the world proletariat. But in this world of total war we find it necessary to prevent any neutral state from possibly joining the enemy side. 
and thus we will declare war on all of the other neutral faction. Portugal has capitulated and the Spanish are barely hanging on. We are just destroying everyone. They did not stand a single chance in hell. Just notice the Japanese invaded the, the mainland. So I'm just gonna send my reserve army to deal with that. That's right, they didn't surprise me. I had the I had a reservist army just in case they got a landing from somewhere. There you go, Spain has capitulated. Now we just have to continue pushing forwards. I guess I may have to thank my tanks for a ride uh, to quick true friends to quickly break their lines. Because they are a bit too entrenched. Yeah, currently I'm just committing cancer in France. I'm just killing insane amounts of trains and trucks and everything else, destroying the enemy supply, and I'm just using my insane modern tanks with like 3000 breakthrough to just destroy all of these divisions. This is such a cancer. This isn't even late game wards. This is like super late game wars. It's a whole nother category. God, the Japanese and their allies are already up to 4.5 million casualties. Oh, sorry, 6.7. This includes the miners. Like, damn. These tanks were such a good investment. Yep, I'm just going to drive to the last parts of the French state. Cut off these divisions in the south and... Yeah, I think that's going to be Europe secured, basically. They have a lot of troops, but when you lose like 6.7 million troops in like 3 months, that doesn't really help. Yes, that, that is yet another ridiculously massive encirclement. Like, all of these guys are encircled, they are starving, they don't have equipment. I could have just ended this after I defeat the Germans and like split the world with the Japanese, but no. I want to go for the world proletariat revolution. God, these encirclements are so ridiculous. Can, they, can you just close them, please? Right now there are 10 million casualties, I'm slowly grinding their numbers down. I've just been killing units for the last hour or two hours and I caused 30 million deaths. I think it is time to go. I'm just pushing through the Netherlands and extending the front line. This is so horrible. By the way, the name of oligarchy Venice is Most Serene Republic of Venice. What stupid ass name is that, honestly? Yep, I've just encircled everything here. We just keep going. We just keep on going. God, this is so me. I've caused 37 million casualties the co prosperity sphere. Oh, this is amazing. This is amazing. Oh god, what am I doing? It's 1952, god help. I'm regretting my choice to continue this, this recording. I should have stopped it back in 1947. This is uh, yet another massive stupid encirclement I'm going to close. Here goes Romania too. Now let's get Sofia. There goes Bulgaria, Turkey. Japan is the only major that it's going to remain. That means that if I capitulate them, I can finally end this war. End this damn video. God, and I'm finally planning to invade the mainland, finally, after I destroyed their army I in Eurasia. Like, please don't tell me they have garrisons, they, they, they cannot stop, they surely cannot, they, it's not allowed, it's simply not allowed. Right, we captured the islands, yay, now I can finally launch an invasion on the mainland because I finally have superiority. When I get the nukes here, I'm burning Tokyo to the ground. We have landed, let's go. Get our armies here. I'm going to punish Japan for all the pain that they have caused me. Or the, or the pain that I have caused myself by deciding to fight Japan and not just have peace. Anyway, they are getting nuked. This is for what you did to me, Japan. Now suffer the pain of 60 suns dropped on you. Atomic bombing of Kyoto and Tokyo. Yeah, you're damn right this is the end of you. Go hell. Launch the offensive and finish them. Actually, no, I just drop another nuke. I, I have it in stock, I might as well use it. Now that we have won against the Japanese imperialists, we have reorganized the other territories of the world into communist super states to properly empower the local workers. The Arab world was united, the African people got their own state after hundreds of years of colonialism, and Europe was split between two super states to properly manage the landmass. Oceania was united under one administration to give the indigenous people the proper power they deserve, and we created the Asian Combine. 
to unite the several hundreds of millions of people of Asia. Now, the workers of the world stand united under the Toronto Accord to unite the communist nations of the planet. And it won't be long until all the workers of the world unite into one glorious super state to encompass all the lands that stretch from east to west. See you commerce next time and have a nice day. Bye.